Hi and welcome. I'm Lisa Wood, interior designer and certified living in place professional. I focus on creating personalized home environments that are so perfect for now and the future for all ages and all stages. And today we are going to talk about guest houses and look at some amazing interiors to show you what possibilities are ahead of you if you choose to take this on. Last week, if you didn't get a chance to see that video, I shared some custom built guest houses that tie in with the original architecture of a home. And on episode one, I shared prefabricated units that literally they build off site and then just plop them on your yard when they are all done. And typically those can, the turnaround can be about 90 days because they are in a much more controlled environment where they can build and then they can bring it in. So today I want to go on the inside, which is what I love to see because there are some truly beautiful options that you can bring into your guest house should you decide that that's going to be your next step. So the benefit of a guest house can definitely, there's many. I mean, you've got rental income potential, you've got workspace potential, you have a place obviously for guests, you've got the ability then to have family members come live with you, whether they're your parents or your your kids that are boomeranging back, um, either way, or what if what about a caregiver? I mean, it, it really can make a lot of great sense. There are med cottages too that you can get into to where with smart home features, you can add those elements to alert you if somebody you know, about medicine, taking their medicine. I know my mother was on meds for a long time and way too many from my liking, but, uh, it, you know, it was what it was. So just being able to have that smart technology for for uh, somebody living in there because it's becoming very popular in in modern homes today, especially with lighting and, and cooking and security, it's it's fantastic what, what we're able to monitor. And so that might be something else to consider as a med cottage if, if that was necessary. When you look at doing a guest cottage, you definitely want to make sure that you have got the right team in place that can help you pull this off and make it successful. So you want to have an architect, an engineer, a builder, and a designer. Those are going to be your your core team to make sure you can pull this all together and you definitely want to be having conversations with the city because if you are going to use this as a piece of property that you can make money from there are going to be regulations that you have to hit and permits that you have to pull to make sure that it is built to spec and to code uh, because somebody who's a DIYer this won't cut the it won't cut the mustard. So you're going to want to have that have that uh, extra layer of security, making sure that this is done right. So why don't we take a look at some houses? It's kind of like being a voyeur when you get to see the inside. I love that part. All right. So this office design we looked at last week in the custom architecture. So you'll if you go back to last week's video, you'll get to see the exterior of it. But on the inside, I just thought it was so beautifully done because he they built full height bookcases that I, I just I love books. I love to read. So when you have that library of resources at your fingertips that you can go go in and escape and help read a nice book or actually get some work done. Beautiful option. Plus, I love the sofa that they put in in this unit, too, because it doubles as a bed. So if you just need a little cat nap, there you go. Get a little blanket. You're good. Or you could actually have guests stay out there. So with the right type of furniture, if it's a convertible type of piece, it gives you a lot of flexibility. All right, this one I think is absolutely stunning. So I did include the architecture on this, the outside as well, but this is a carriage house. And the cool thing about this story is the gentleman that lives in that carriage house, he actually owned the property and his kids grew up there. Well, he's a little bit older, he's in his 70s, he's very active, but he couldn't find a place that he wanted to go to and downsize into. And they had an acre worth of property. so. He talked to his kids and one of the sons was interested. So they got together and they ended up having this carriage house designed. And it is, it's quite a bit smaller than what the main house was. 
I think it was around 600 square feet, maybe 800 square feet. I can't remember. Um, but they they built it on the back side of the property. He lived in the main house until it was done. And then when the carriage house was completed, he moved in here. His son and their family came in. The grandkids get to be near the grandfather much more often. And it turned out to be a beautiful spot. So I love the level of detail on this. I mean, look at that. That kitchen is just, it's wide open. The cabinetry, custom, going all the way up to the ceiling. You've got high ceilings that peek out over onto the yard. The bathroom is well done. And that is a barrier-free shower, which is something every home needs, I believe, because as we get older, we want don't want to be messing and tripping over that curb. And because if ever you had to have a wheelchair or or a walker, you know, for some reason, you can get in there easily. Plus, it's kind of nice for pet washing if you had a dog, um, not having to lift them in and out of a tub. But I just, I just think this, this, this project was so well done. Beautiful. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is a basement remodel, and I didn't put all of the pictures. I, they, I just wanted to show you some to show you the potential. This actually had carpet and paneling, and I think it was built in the 70s, 60s or 70s, so it was dated. Um, the guy that owns this, he is a DIY builder, and one of the things that he learned, a hard lesson he learned, was that he really needed to get to the city and let them know that this was going to be a unit that they were going to rent out. So he had to pull permits twice, which cost him a little bit more money. Um, but he said the city was super helpful in, in helping him navigate through the process of it all. So you just, you know, you got to think through it. Just and don't be afraid to talk to people and ask questions. But I think he did a nice job. And from the success of what they had by the time they got this unit complete, it the they got a steady stream of rental income in. I think they went with a long-term rental. So they had a steady, steady stream of rental income coming in that helped them um, basically, you know, live, pay their mortgage, which is really a great, a great option. You got to get, you got to like dual living though, if you're going to do that. All right. Now this place is dreamy. I think this interior designer did a fantastic job. Um, her name is Marie Flanagan and she took a space above her garage about 500 square feet and converted it raised the ceiling as you can see they did have to have some support beams left in there but she wrapped it in a white oak which i think is beautifully done and it just makes it wide open and spacious so you've got space for a bed you've got a little kitchenette you've got a bathroom and everything is bright and wide open i think this is fantastic and the kitchenette with where the coffee is i mean the smart design that you can do you can afford to go with some custom builds at that point to really make that function so well when i designed was working with an aircraft interior designer i mean we took those corporate airplanes and everything had to be so meticulously thought out and when you get into a small space that's what you want to do you really want to think through that and talk to certain people to help you maximize the function of it i think it's beautiful let me know what you think of this one another interior designer very talented gentleman sean i have no idea how to pronounce his last name but he's out in la and they have a spanish colonial home and they wanted to tie into that but as a separate unit for guests so this is 345 square feet and it has a courtyard that combines the two properties and i think again the level of detail that he did is fantastic so he went with, he wanted to stay true to the architecture of the home to have that Spanish colonial, but I also love that he has all of those modern touches. And to offset the modernism, he brought in vintage pieces like that rug, the stylus sofa, which is more traditional, and, uh, you know, some of the, the wood elements. So it's not all brand new, but it, I think it looks sharp. And this one I thought was very interesting. This is a library out in upstate New York. It was designed by an architect design firm and then built by the artist that lives there. So they call it the Hemleg Rom, which is, means secret room. And, uh, and they use it as a guest house library. Again, I'm a big book lover. I love to read. I think knowledge is 
so important to continue on with every day of your life and to go cuddle up in that and cozy up in that space with all those books. I think my oldest daughter would definitely love it. She loves libraries, but it's all made out of oak trees that were found on the property. So that's kind of a, a really cool story. So if you have property that you can you can source the wood from, that makes it a really great story. So these are some points that if you are going to rent, you want to make sure that you are aware of. Um, you want to understand tenancy options. Is it long-term versus short-term? Because that makes a difference with the city. You've got to get your permits. Don't skimp on that. Even if you think you can try to do this work on your own, you want to make sure you're going to have to have your electricity and your plumbing verified by a licensed contractor. You don't want to mess with that stuff. Um, with when it comes to mortgage financing, you need to talk to your lender about what you're trying to do because they can help you navigate through it. Um, sometimes insurance companies may not want to take that on as a risk. And the other key thing is if you're looking to buy a home that has a guest cottage that you can turn into a rental opportunity, make sure that it was permitted because the sale can completely fall flat if that building was not done properly. So you need to take those extra steps and extra measures to make sure it's done well. And then, as I mentioned, if you are going to rent, you want to make sure you're good with communal living. And that means you're going to be used to people coming and going. And, you know, hopefully it's a win-win all the way around. If you're a private person like my husband, it's not going to be his cup of tea. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, unless it's the kids, the kids back home. So there are, there can be some legal issues because some cities I, I were not letting ADUs be prevalent in their cities, but I think that cities are starting to change, especially with everything that's going on with COVID. So it's becoming much more ex, um, acceptable and permissible by cities. So do your checking, just do your due diligence. When it comes to utilities, sometimes you can, you know, have that separate unit um, monitored individually so then the tenant pays for it but again just doing some homework if you have the opportunity to find a guest cottage that you can actually go take a look at go do so it can help you in your research I think it's great to take that time and take take that legwork to really go scope out and see what's av available in your area and what and find out how that process went for that that particular family and if they built it or if they bought it and and what they can what they can share with you it'll help you in your homework and again if you do add something on like this you want to get your good team of people in place ask around get referrals don't be afraid to check um, definitely when you're talking to people on referrals you can also uh, ask their vendor find out who their vendors are and see what kind of client they are as to that particular vendor that can help you in your research but a good team is important because they're going to be able to help keep your costs in line and in your timeline so again budgets budgets can range anywhere from if it's a um, a renovation to an existing basement that might have already been put in place and it's not raw then some projects have been around 30,000, but again, they can go well over 300,000, all depending on materials, all depending on what's done in it, all depending on where you live, and just those little details. And then time frame, nine to 12 months on average, it can be a little bit less if, it, again, if the structure's already there and you're just renovating a small portion. But I think the payout is huge. The return on investment can be just fantastic for you and your family. And it can really, I think, add a lot of value, not only from the money standpoint, but also from lifestyle, especially if it's with your family and in your friends. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to click that bell for future notifications. I do love hearing what you take away and hopefully something here inspired you to help make your home better and your life more livable with your family and friends because that's what we're here for. And I would love to hear if there's any particular content that you would like to learn more about. Drop me some ideas. I want to expand and really bring to you some things that that are really gonna help improve your life so until next time i hope you guys have a great week thanks for joining me